combination circuits, series RLC circuits in the condition where XL, the inductive reactance, is greater than the capacitive reactance. Looking at our RLC circuit, we've established that the three components are now connected in series with each other. These are connected to a supply voltage. That supply voltage is going to allow a current to flow through those three components according to the total impedance of the circuit. That current will cause a voltage to develop on the resistor, a voltage to develop on the inductor and a voltage to develop on the capacitor in accordance with Ohm's law for each of those individual components. When looking at those three components, we know that the current flow in all three is going to be identical because they are in series. The voltage on the resistor is going to be in phase with the current. The voltage on the inductor is going to be leading. And because the inductive reactance is greater than the capacitors, capacitance, reactants, the inductive voltage is going to be greater and then the voltage on the capacitor is going to be smaller in a lagging aspect. When combining these three we find that the current flow and the voltage on the resistor are in phase. The voltage on the inductor will be leading and the voltage on the capacitor will be lagging. Now when looking at the two voltages like we did in the previous part, the capacitor and the inductor are in opposite directions therefore they subtract from each other. That gives us that point over there approximately. When we project that point across and the voltage on the resistor upwards, we find that my total voltage will have a lead on the current. The impedance diagram will be exactly the same. XL above, XC underneath. Then we will have R on the horizontal when we subtract those two from each other, that gives us that point over there. That represents the total reactance, XL minus XC, and my impedance will be shown on the diagonal like that. To calculate the size of the total voltage, V total is equal to the square root of R voltage on the resistor squared plus the difference between the inductor and capacitor voltage but VL is greater so VL minus VC square that total and then root the overall sum. When it comes to the impedance calculation same R squared plus XL minus XC, those two squared and then root them both, or we can just simply say Ohm's law, total current multiplied by the impedance gives me the total voltage, or total current equals the total voltage divided by the impedance. For parallel, We've got the capacitor in parallel with the resistor, in parallel with the inductor or the coil. These all connect to my supply voltage, which is now my reference, because it is the constant. The supply current 
will divide into the inductive branch, the resistive branch, as well as the capacitive branch. The inductor and the capacitor together wants to be in harmony, so as the capacitor discharges, it transfers its stored energy into the magnetic field of the inductor, and when the magnetic field on the inductor de-energizes, it then tries to store that energy in the capacitor. The voltage on the inductor, capacitor and resistor will all be equal. The resistor current is in phase, capacitor current is leading, and the inductor current will be lagging. But because the inductive reactance is greater, it's going to have less current flow through it, therefore the current flow through the capacitor will be greater. The size of the current flows is dependent on the reactances. When we combine these three vectors, we find that voltage still remains our reference, Resistor current, uh, that's 3 up approximately, and that's about 1.5 down. I've got inductive current, I've got capacitive current leading, and then when we subtract those two, I get my total reactive current approximately there. And then I will have my total current leading the voltage by that angle over there. In order to calculate my total current, I total, again we're using Pythagoras, equals I, the resistor current squared, plus the capacitor current minus the inductor current, because capacitor current is greater. And then I root the sum for the impedance, 1 over Z equals the root of 1 over R squared plus 1 over XL minus 1 over XC squared, that entire grouping rooted, or again Z is equal to V total over I total.